Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's problem I got from one of my subscribers and here's a problem. A cross was made between two parents differing for two independent genes, each with alleles dominant and recessive allele A and capital B and capital B prime. Allele A capital is dominant over recessive allele A and allele B is co-dominant over the B prime allele. In the F2 generation, the phenotypic segregation ratio obtained will be, and you have to choose one of these answers. So what we are told? We are told that we have two parents, so parent one, which has two genes, A and B, and which are going to be different for those two genes. So let's say that genotype of one parent is going to be capital A, capital A, and capital B, capital B, and we cross with another parent, so it's going to be parent two, whose genotype is going to be small a, small a, and capital B prime, capital B prime. Let's read our question again. A cross was made between two parents. So we have two parents differing for two independent genes. We have gene A and B, each with alleles, which represent here dominant and recessive and two co-dominant alleles. So this is exactly what we see here. Allele A is dominant over the recessive allele A and allele B is co-dominant over the B prime. So this is what we see here. And we call this parental generation. So next generation after such a cross would be F1 generation. So F1 generation. And what kind of progeny we are going to have from parent 1 for the gene A, progeny only can get allele which is capital A, no any other variants. It can be whether this allele or this, but both alleles are the same. And from the parent 2 only can get recessive allele. Again, it doesn't matter this or this one it's still going to be a recessive allele A. So we know for sure that all the progeny in F1 generation are going to be heterozygous for the gene A. And as for the gene B from the parent one, all the progeny only can get dominant allele B. So can be capital B and from the parent two only can get B prime. So genotype would be capital B and capital B prime how we are going to get F2 generation. We just have to self cross F1 generation. So we have to cross with the same genotype. Of course, we are not going to get only one. It can be animal or plant in F2 generation. We are going to get a plenty of F1 generation, but all of the animals or plants are going to be of the same genotype. So if we self pollinate or self cross, if it is going to be animals, we are going to have for both parents, the same genotype. As you see, this genotype and this genotype is the same. And this is how we are going to get F2 generation. But unlike F1 generation, which is going to be genetically uniform, F2 generation are going to be more diverse. For example, what kind of gametes parent one can produce? So this is going to be parent one and this is going to be parent two of the F1 generation. And the first type of gamete is going to be capital A and capital B. So capital A and capital B. Another variant would be capital A and capital B prime. Capital A and capital B prime. Yet another variant would be small a and capital B. So small a and capital B. And the last variant would be small a and capital B prime. Small a and capital B prime. We have listed here all the type of the gametes which parent one can produce. But parent two has the same genotype. So will produce the same four type of the gametes. Let's list those variants in a column. So we 
are going to have the same variance, capital A and capital B, capital A and capital B prime, small a, capital B and small a, capital B prime. Now let's draw simple Punnett square. It's going to be four by four. So we are going to have four rows and four columns. So one, two, three and four. Now let's list all the possible deployed genotypes of the progeny. So again, this is gametes of parent one. Of course, parents have to be of the different sex. For example, this is going to be sperm. Sperm is haploid. So would have only one allele from each allelic pair. And this is going to be Excel from the other parent. And as you see, this is gametes. And here inside the cells, when these two gametes would join, we are going to get deployed organism. For example, in the first cell, genotype would be of the deployed organism, capital A, capital A, and capital B, capital B here. Capital A, capital A here, and B, and B prime here. Capital A, small a here, and capital B, capital B here. Capital A, small a here, capital B, and capital B prime here. Capital A, capital A here, and capital B, capital B prime here capital A, capital A here, and B prime, and B prime here, capital A and small a here, capital B, capital B prime here, capital A, small a here, and B prime, B prime here, capital A, small a, and capital B, capital B, capital A small a and B prime capital B here, small a small a and capital B capital B, small a small a, B prime B here and last column would be capital A small a and capital B capital B prime Another variant would be capital A small a here and B prime B prime here. Another variant would be small a small a capital B capital B prime. And the last variant would be small a small a and B prime B prime here. Before I will show you the ratio of the phenotypes I need to draw a couple more Punnett squares. Take a look. Gene A is just simple dominance. So if one parent is heterozygous and another parent is heterozygous, what we are going to get? Take a look. So in the progeny, we are going to get following ratio of the genotypes and phenotypes. Capital A, capital A here, capital A and small a here, capital A, small a here, and small a, small a here. Let's say that this is trait that specifies in cows whether they have horns or if they don't have. For example, if cow has dominant allele, that cow has horns. If two recessive alleles doesn't have horns. So that means in the progeny, we are going to have two phenotypes. The first phenotype would be with horns and the second would be without horns. But with codominance, which specified by the gene B, we are going to have different picture. Take a look. One parent can produce two variants, B and B prime, and parent two also can produce two variants, B and B prime. Now, when we draw a Punnett square, we are going to have different ratio of the genotypes and phenotypes in the next generation if we compare with this variant. Let's say that uh, allele 
B would specify uh, red pigment and B prime would specify white pigment. So genotype which is going to be BB would produce red pigment in the progeny. So red pigment in the progeny, so cows would be of the red color. And genotype which is B and B prime, B and B prime here would be co-expressed. So this cow would be with red and white spots. So genotype B and B prime would specify cow with red and white spots. Red and white spots. But if the progeny would be of the B prime B prime genotype, all such progeny are going to be of the white color. So only one type of pigment is going to be produced in such animals. So we have a ratio of 1 to 2 to 1 in the progeny. So three phenotypes. Now let's return to our Punnett square and let's find how many phenotypes we have here. For example, the first genotype capital A capital A B and B would mean a cow with horns which color is going to be red. So let's designate special color. Let's say this color would specify this phenotype. And what about this genotype? It's going to be different phenotype. So this cow would have also horns, but it's going to be spotted with red and white spots. So this is going to be different phenotype. So let's check uh, this genotype those being different from this one, but phenotype is going to be the same. Cow with horns and whose color is going to be red, uniform red color. Here is going to be another same phenotype. And do we have more? Now we have only three such phenotypes which are going to be the same. Now let's check this phenotype. So this genotype means cow with horns, but who is going to be spotted with red and white spots. Let's specify this phenotype by this color. Now let's find if we have any more uh, genotypes that is going to specify the same phenotype. And here is another one. And here is another one. Another one here. And here. And here. By the way, let's start building ratio. So we have one, two, three of the one phenotype. So three, two, one, two, three, four, five, six of the other phenotype. So three to six is going to be our ratio so far. Two, let's find other phenotypes. For example, what kind of phenotype this genotype would produce cow with horns, who is going to be completely white. So let's circle with this color, so yellow color, and here's another variant here. And do we have more? Yes, we have one more variant here. So our ratio is going to be 3 to 6 to 3, and we have some more phenotypes. You see four boxes are still not circled. So what this type of phenotype going to be? This is going to be a cow with, without horns and which is going to be of the uniform red color. So no horns and uniform red color. Do we have more of this type? No, we don't. So to one ratio. And we still have three more boxes. For example, what this genotype would specify. And by the way, we have two similar genotypes, which is going to be the same. So 
they would specify the same phenotype, no horns, and cow would be with red and white spots. No horns, red and white spots. Now let's use this color, gray color, to specify this unique phenotype. So two, two, and the last one would be cow without horns and whose color is going to be uniform white. So let's this color would specify this phenotype. And this is going to be only one such phenotype out of all these possible combinations. As you see, there are possible different variants and each phenotype would happen with different frequency. Now let's return to our problem and let's check variants of the answers. And as you see, this is going to be answer C. The ratio of the phenotypes is going to be one. So we have one, two, two, we have two here, two, one, we have one here, two, three, we have three here, two, six, we have six here, two, three, and we have three here. As you see, the correct answer is answer C. For those who are still confused, the order of these numbers here is not important. The only what is important, the ratio. And the ratio, it doesn't matter how we change their places, is going to be the same between these phenotypes. And this is all for today. Subscribe and see you in the next video. Goodbye.